Evolutionary game theory is the application of game theory to evolving populations in biology. It defines a framework of contests, strategies, and analytics into which Darwinian competition can be modeled. It originated in 1973 with John Maynard Smith and George R. Price's formalization of contests, analyzed as strategies, and the mathematical criteria that can be used to predict the results of competing strategies. Evolutionary game theory differs from classical game theory in focusing more on the dynamics of strategy change. This is influenced by the frequency of the competing strategies in the population. Evolutionary game theory has helped to explain the basis of altruistic behaviors in Darwinian evolution. It has in turn become of interest to economists, sociologists, anthropologists, and philosophers. History Classical game theory Classical non-cooperative game theory was conceived by John von Neumann to determine optimal strategies in competitions between adversaries. A contest involves players, all of whom have a choice of moves. Games can be a single round or repetitive. The approach a player takes in making his moves constitutes his strategy. Rules govern the outcome for the moves taken by the players, and outcomes produce payoffs for the players. Rules and resulting payoffs can be expressed as decision trees or in a payoff matrix. Classical theory requires the players to make rational choices. Each player must consider the strategic analysis that his opponents are making to make his own choice of moves. Topic: The problem of ritualized behavior. Evolutionary game theory started with the problem of how to explain ritualized animal behavior in a conflict situation. Why are animals so gentlemanly or ladylike in contests for resources? The leading ethologists Nico Tinbergen and Conrad Lorenz proposed that such behavior exists for the benefit of the species. John Maynard Smith considered that incompatible with Darwinian thought, where selection occurs at an individual level, so self-interest is rewarded while seeking the common good is not. Maynard Smith, a mathematical biologist, turned to game theory as suggested by George Price, though Richard Lewontin's attempts to use the theory had failed. <laughs> Adapting game theory to evolutionary games Maynard Smith realized that an evolutionary version of game theory does not require players to act rationally, only that they have a strategy. The results of a game shows how good that strategy was, just as evolution tests alternative strategies for the ability to survive and reproduce. In biology, strategies are genetically inherited traits that control an individual's action, analogous with computer programs. The success of a strategy is determined by how good the strategy is in the presence of competing strategies including itself, and of the frequency with which those strategies are used. Maynard Smith described his work in his book Evolution and the Theory of Games. Participants aim to produce as many replicas of themselves as they can, and the payoff is in units of fitness, relative worth in being able to reproduce. It is always a multiplayer game with many competitors. Rules include replicator dynamics, in other words, how the fitter players will spawn more replicas of themselves into the population and how the less fit will be culled, in a replicator equation. The replicator dynamics models heredity but not mutation, and assumes asexual reproduction for the sake of simplicity. Games are run repetitively with no terminating conditions. Results include the dynamics of changes in the population, the success of strategies, and any equilibrium states reached. Unlike in classical game theory, players do not choose their strategy and cannot change it, they are born with a strategy and their offspring inherit that same strategy. Evolutionary games Models EGT encompasses Darwinian evolution, including competition the game, natural selection replicator dynamics, and heredity. EGT has contributed to the understanding of group selection, sexual selection, altruism, parental care, co-evolution, and ecological dynamics. 
Many counter-intuitive situations in these areas have been put on a firm mathematical footing by the use of these models. The common way to study the evolutionary dynamics in games is through replicator equations. These show the growth rate of the proportion of organisms using a certain strategy and that rate is equal to the difference between the average payoff of that strategy and the average payoff of the population as a whole. Continuous replicator equations assume infinite populations, continuous time, complete mixing and that strategies breed true. The attractors stable fixed points of the equations are equivalent with evolutionarily stable states. A strategy which can survive all mutant strategies is considered evolutionarily stable. In the context of animal behavior, this usually means such strategies are programmed and heavily influenced by genetics, thus making any player or organism's strategy determined by these biological factors. Evolutionary games are mathematical objects with different rules, payoffs, and mathematical behaviors. Each game represents different problems that organisms have to deal with, and the strategies they might adopt to survive and reproduce. Evolutionary games are often given colorful names and cover stories which describe the general situation of a particular game. Representative games include Hawk Dove, War of Attrition, Stag Hunt, Producer Scrounger, Tragedy of the Commons, and Prisoner's Dilemma. Strategies for these games include Hawk, Dove, Bourgeois, Prober, Defector, Assessor, and Retaliator. The various strategies compete under the particular game's rules, and the mathematics are used to determine the results and behaviors. Topic. Hawk Dove The first game that Maynard Smith analyzed is the classic Hawk Dove game. It was conceived to analyze Lorenz and Tinbergen's problem, a contest over a shareable resource. The contestants can be either Hawk or Dove. These are two subtypes or morphs of one species with different strategies. The Hawk first displays aggression, then escalates into a fight until it either wins or is injured loses. The dove first displays aggression, but if faced with major escalation runs for safety. If not faced with such escalation, the dove attempts to share the resource. Given that the resource is given the value V, the damage from losing a fight is given cost C. If a hawk meets a dove he gets the full resource V to himself. If a hawk meets a hawk, half the time he wins, half the time he loses less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 so his average outcome is then v 2 minus c 2 if a dove meets a hawk he will back off and get nothing zero if a dove meets a dove both share the resource and get v 2 the actual payoff however depends on the probability of meeting a hawk or dove which in turn is a representation of the percentage of hawks and doves in the population when a particular contest takes place that in turn is determined by the results of all of the previous contests. If the cost of losing C is greater than the value of winning V the normal situation in the natural world the mathematics ends in an S, a mix of the two strategies where the population of hawks is V, C. The population regresses to this equilibrium point if any new hawks or doves make a temporary perturbation in the population. The solution of the hawk-dove game explains why most animal contests involve only ritual fighting behaviors in contests rather than outright battles. The result does not at all depend on good of the species behaviors as suggested by Lorenz, but solely on the implication of actions of so-called selfish genes. War of attrition In the hawk dove game, the resource is shareable, which gives payoffs to both doves meeting in a pairwise contest. Where the resource is not shareable, but an alternative resource might be available by backing off and trying elsewhere, pure hawk or dove strategies are less effective. If an unshareable resource is combined with a high cost of losing a contest, injury or possible death, both hawk and dove payoffs are further diminished. A safer strategy of lower cost display, bluffing and waiting to win, is then viable, a bluffer strategy. The game then becomes one of accumulating costs, either the costs of displaying or the costs of prolonged unresolved engagement. It is effectively an auction, the winner is the contestant who will swallow the greater cost while the loser gets the same cost as the winner but no resource. The resulting evolutionary game theory mathematics leads to an optimal strategy of timed bluffing. 
This is because in the war of attrition any strategy that is unwavering and predictable is unstable, because it will ultimately be displaced by a mutant strategy which relies on the fact that it can best the existing predictable strategy by investing an extra small delta of waiting resource to ensure that it wins. Therefore, only a random unpredictable strategy can maintain itself in a population of bluffers. The contestants in effect choose an acceptable cost to be incurred related to the value of the resource being sought, effectively making a random bid as part of a mixed strategy a strategy where a contestant has several, or even many, possible actions in his strategy. This implements a distribution of bids for a resource of specific value V, where the bid for any specific contest is chosen at random from that distribution. The distribution an S can be computed using the Bishop-Canning's theorem, which holds true for any mixed strategy S. The distribution function in these contests was determined by Parker and Thompson to be P X equals E minus X V V display style P X equals frac E caret X V V the result is that the cumulative population of quitters for any particular cost m in this mixed strategy solution is p m equals 1 minus e minus m v display style p m equals 1 e caret m v as shown in the adjacent graph the intuitive sense that greater values of resource sought leads to greater waiting times is borne out. This is observed in nature, as in male dung flies contesting for mating sites, where the timing of disengagement in contests is as predicted by evolutionary theory mathematics. <laughs> Asymmetries that allow new strategies In the war of attrition there must be nothing that signals the size of a bid to an opponent, otherwise the opponent can use the cue in an effective counter-strategy. There is however a mutant strategy which can better a bluffer in the war of attrition game if a suitable asymmetry exists, the bourgeois strategy. Bourgeois uses an asymmetry of some sort to break the deadlock. In nature one such asymmetry is possession of a resource. The strategy is to play a hawk if in possession of the resource, but to display then retreat if not in possession. This requires greater cognitive capability than hawk, but bourgeois is common in many animal contests, such as in contests among mantis shrimps and among speckled wood butterflies. <laughs> <laughs> Social behavior Games like Hawk Dove and War of Attrition represent pure competition between individuals and have no attendant social elements. Where social influences apply, competitors have four possible alternatives for strategic interaction. This is shown on the adjacent figure, where a plus sign represents a benefit and a minus sign represents a cost. In a cooperative or mutualistic relationship both donor and recipient are almost indistinguishable as both gain a benefit in the game by co-operating, i.e. the pair are in a game-wise situation where both can gain by executing a certain strategy, or alternatively both must act in concert because of some encompassing constraints that effectively puts them in the same boat. In an altruistic relationship the donor, at a cost to himself provides a benefit to the recipient. In the general case the recipient will have a kin relationship to the donor and the donation is one way. Behaviors where benefits are donated alternatively in both directions at a cost, are often called altruistic, but on analysis such altruism can be seen to arise from optimized selfish strategies. Spite is essentially a reversed form of altruism where an ally is aided by damaging the ally's competitors. The general case is that the ally is kin-related and the benefit is an easier competitive environment for the ally. Note, George Price, one of the early mathematical modelers of both altruism and spite, found this equivalence particularly disturbing at an emotional level. Selfishness is the base criteria of all strategic choice from a game theory perspective. Strategies not aimed at self-survival and self-replication are not long for any game. Critically however, this situation is impacted by the fact that competition is taking place on multiple levels, i.e. at a genetic, an individual and a group level.
Topic: <laughs> Contests of selfish genes. At first glance it may appear that the contestants of evolutionary games are the individuals present in each generation who directly participate in the game. But individuals live only through one game cycle, and instead it is the strategies that really contest with one another over the duration of these many generation games. So it is ultimately genes that play out a full contest, selfish genes of strategy. The contesting genes are present in an individual and to a degree in all of the individual's kin. This can sometimes profoundly affect which strategies survive, especially with issues of cooperation and defection. William Hamilton, known for his theory of kin selection, explored many of these cases using game-theoretic models. Kin-related treatment of game contests helps to explain many aspects of the behavior of social insects, the altruistic behavior in parent-offspring interactions, mutual protection behaviors, and cooperative care of offspring. For such games Hamilton defined an extended form of fitness, inclusive fitness, which includes an individual's offspring as well as any offspring equivalents found in kin. Hamilton went beyond kin-relatedness to work with Robert Axelrod, analyzing games of cooperation under conditions not involving kin where reciprocal altruism comes into play. Eusociality and kin selection Eusocial insect workers forfeit reproductive rights to their queen. It has been suggested that kin selection, based on the genetic makeup of these workers, may predispose them to altruistic behavior. Most eusocial insect societies have haplodiploid sexual determination, which means that workers are unusually closely related. This explanation of insect eusociality has however been challenged by a few highly noted evolutionary game theorists Novak and Wilson who have published a controversial alternative game-theoretic explanation based on a sequential development and group selection effects proposed for these insect species. Prisoner's Dilemma A difficulty of the theory of evolution, recognized by Darwin himself, was the problem of altruism. If the basis for selection is at individual level, altruism makes no sense at all. But universal selection at the group level for the good of the species, not the individual fails to pass the test of the mathematics of game theory and is certainly not the general case in nature. Yet in many social animals, altruistic behavior exists. The solution to this paradox can be found in the application of evolutionary game theory to the prisoner's dilemma game, a game which tests the payoffs of cooperating or in defecting from cooperation. It is certainly the most studied game in all of game theory. The analysis of prisoner's dilemma is as a repetitive game. This affords competitors the possibility of retaliating for defection in previous rounds of the game. Many strategies have been tested, the best competitive strategies are general cooperation with a reserved retaliatory response if necessary. The most famous and one of the most successful of these is tit-for-tat with a simple algorithm. The payoff for any single round of the game is defined by the payoff matrix for a single round game shown in bar chart 1 below. In multi-round games the different choices, cooperate or defect, can be made in any particular round, resulting in a certain round payoff. It is, however, the possible accumulated payoffs over the multiple rounds that count in shaping the overall payoffs for differing multi-round strategies such as tit-for-tat. Example 1, the straightforward single-round prisoner's dilemma game. The classic prisoner's dilemma game payoffs gives a player a maximum payoff if he defect and his partner co-operates this choice is known as temptation. If however the player co-operates and his partner defects, he gets the worst possible result the sucker's payoff. In these payoff conditions the best choice a Nash equilibrium is to defect. Example 2, prisoner's dilemma played repeatedly. The strategy employed is tit-for-tat which alters behaviors based on the action taken by a partner in the previous round, i.e. reward cooperation and punish defection. The effect of this strategy in accumulated payoff over many rounds is to produce a higher payoff for both players' cooperation and a lower payoff for defection. This removes the temptation to defect. The sucker's payoff also becomes less, although invasion by a pure defection strategy is not entirely eliminated. Topic: <laughs> Roots to altruism. 
Altruism takes place when one individual, at a cost c to itself, exercises a strategy that provides a benefit b to another individual. The cost may consist of a loss of capability or resource which helps in the battle for survival and reproduction, or an added risk to its own survival. Altruism strategies can arise through. The evolutionarily stable strategy The evolutionarily stable strategy S is akin to Nash equilibrium in classical game theory, but with mathematically extended criteria. Nash equilibrium is a game equilibrium where it is not rational for any player to deviate from his present strategy, provided that the others adhere to their strategies. An S is a state of game dynamics where, in a very large population of competitors, another mutant strategy cannot successfully enter the population to disturb the existing dynamic which itself depends on the population mix. Therefore, a successful strategy with an S must be both effective against competitors when it is rare, to enter the previous competing population, and successful when later in high proportion in the population, to defend itself. This in turn means that the strategy must be successful when it contends with others exactly like itself, and S is not an optimal strategy, that would maximize fitness, and many S states are far below the maximum fitness achievable in a fitness landscape, see Hawk Dove graph above as an example of this. A singular solution, often several S conditions can exist in a competitive situation. A particular contest might stabilize into any one of these possibilities, but later a major perturbation in conditions can move the solution into one of the alternative S states. Always present, it is possible for there to be no S. An evolutionary game with no S is rock-scissors-paper, as found in species such as the side-blotched lizard An unbeatable strategy, the S is only an uninvadable strategy. The S state can be solved for by exploring either the dynamics of population change to determine an S, or by solving equations for the stable stationary point conditions which define an S. For example, in the Hawk Dove game we can look for whether there is a static population mix condition where the fitness of doves will be exactly the same as fitness of hawks therefore both having equivalent growth rates, a static point. Let the chance of meeting a hawk equals p so therefore the chance of meeting a dove is 1 p let hawk equal the payoff for hawk. Hawk equals payoff in the chance of meeting a dove plus payoff in the chance of meeting a hawk. Taking the payoff matrix results and plugging them into the above equation. Hawk equals v 1 p plus v 2 c 2 p. Similarly for a dove. W dove equals v 2 1 p plus o p. So. W dove equals V two one P equating the two fitnesses, Hawk and Dove V one P plus V two C two P equals V two one P and solving for P P equals V C So for this static point where the population percent is an S solves to be S percent Hawk equals V C Similarly, using inequalities, it can be shown that an additional hawk or dove mutant entering this S state eventually results in less fitness for their kind, both a true Nash and an S equilibrium. This example shows that when the risks of contest injury or death the cost C is significantly greater than the potential reward the benefit value V, the stable population will be mixed between aggressors and doves, and the proportion of doves will exceed that of the aggressors. This explains behaviors observed in nature. Unstable games, cyclic patterns Rock-paper-scissors An evolutionary game that turns out to be a children's game is rock-paper-scissors. The game is simple, rock beats scissors, blunts it, scissors beats paper, cuts it, and paper beats rock, wraps it up. Anyone who has ever played this simple game knows that it is not sensible to have any favored play, the opponent will soon notice this and switch to the winning counter play. The best strategy a Nash equilibrium is to play a mixed random game with any of the three plays taken a third of the time. This, in EGT terms, is a mixed strategy. But many life forms are incapable of mixed behavior, they only exhibit one strategy known as a pure strategy. 
If the game is played only with the pure rock, paper and scissors strategies the evolutionary game is dynamically unstable. Rock mutants can enter an all-scissor population, but then Paper mutants can take over an all-rock population, but then Scissor mutants can take over an all-paper population, and on and on. This is easily seen on the game payoff matrix, where if the paths of mutant invasion are noted, it can be seen that the mutant invasion paths form into a loop. This in triggers a cyclic invasion pattern. Rock paper scissors incorporated into an evolutionary game has been used for modeling natural processes in the study of ecology. Using experimental economics methods, scientists have used RPS game to test human social evolutionary dynamical behaviors in laboratory. The social cyclic behaviors, predicted by evolutionary game theory, have been observed in various laboratory experiments. The side-blotched lizard The side-blotched lizard is polymorphic with three morphs that each pursues a different mating strategy. 1. The orange throat is very aggressive and operates over a large territory, attempting to mate with numerous females within this larger area. 2. The unaggressive yellow throat mimics the markings and behavior of female lizards, and sneakily slips into the orange throat's territory to mate with the females there thereby taking over the population, and 3. The blue throat mates with and carefully guards one female, making it impossible for the sneakers to succeed and therefore overtakes their place in a population, however the blue throats cannot overcome the more aggressive orange throats. The overall situation corresponds to the rock, scissors, paper game, creating a six-year population cycle. When he read that these lizards were essentially engaged in a game with rock-paper-scissors structure, John Maynard Smith is said to have exclaimed, They have read my book. Signaling, sexual selection and the handicap principle Aside from the difficulty of explaining how altruism exists in many evolved organisms, Darwin was also bothered by a second conundrum, why do a significant number of species have phenotypical attributes that are patently disadvantageous to them with respect to their survival, and should by the process of natural section be selected against, e.g. the massive inconvenient feather structure found in a peacock's tail? Regarding this issue Darwin wrote to a colleague, The sight of a feather in a peacock's tail, whenever I gaze at it, makes me sick. It is the mathematics of evolutionary game theory, which has not only explained the existence of altruism but also explains the totally counterintuitive existence of the peacock's tail and other such biological encumbrances. On analysis, problems of biological life are not at all unlike the problems that define economics, eating akin to resource acquisition and management, survival competitive strategy and reproduction investment, risk and return. Game theory was originally conceived as a mathematical analysis of economic processes and indeed this is why it has proven so useful in explaining so many biological behaviors. One important further refinement of the EGT model that has economic overtones rests on the analysis of costs. A simple model of cost assumes that all competitors suffer the same penalty imposed by the game costs, but this is not the case. More successful players will be endowed with or will have accumulated a higher wealth reserve or affordability than less successful players. This wealth effect in evolutionary game theory is represented mathematically by resource holding potential RHP and shows that the effective cost to a competitor with higher RHP are not as great as for a competitor with a lower RHP. As a higher RHP individual is more desirable mate in producing potentially successful offspring, it is only logical that with sexual selection RHP should have evolved to be signaled in some way by the competing rivals, and for this to work this signaling must be done honestly. Amats Zahavi has developed this thinking in what is known as the handicap principle, where superior competitors signal their superiority by a costly display. As higher RHP individuals can properly afford such a costly display this signaling is inherently honest, and can be taken as such by the signal receiver. Nowhere in nature is this better illustrated than in the magnificent and costly plumage of the peacock. The mathematical proof of the handicap principle was developed by Alan Graffin using evolutionary game theoretic modeling. Topic. 
Topic: <laughs> Co-evolution. Two types of dynamics have been discussed so far in this article. Evolutionary games which lead to a stable situation or point of stasis for contending strategies which result in an evolutionarily stable strategy. Evolutionary games which exhibit a cyclic behavior as with RPS game where the proportions of contending strategies continuously cycle over time within the overall population. A third, co-evolutionary, dynamic combines intraspecific and interspecific competition. Examples include predator-prey competition and host-parasite co-evolution, as well as mutualism. Evolutionary game models have been created for pairwise and multi-species co-evolutionary systems. The general dynamic differs between competitive systems and mutualistic systems. In competitive interspecies coevolutionary system the species are involved in an arms race, where adaptations that are better at competing against the other species tend to be preserved. Both game payoffs and replicator dynamics reflect this. This leads to a red queen dynamic where the protagonists must run as fast as they can to just stay in one place. A number of EGT models have been produced to encompass coevolutionary situations. A key factor applicable in these coevolutionary systems is the continuous adaptation of strategy in such arms races. Coevolutionary modeling therefore often includes genetic algorithms to reflect mutational effects, while computers simulate the dynamics of the overall coevolutionary game. The resulting dynamics are studied as various parameters are modified. Because several variables are simultaneously at play, solutions become the province of multi-variable optimization. The mathematical criteria of determining stable points are Pareto efficiency and Pareto dominance, a measure of solution optimality peaks in multivariable systems. Carl Bergstrom and Michael Lockman apply evolutionary game theory to the division of benefits in mutualistic interactions between organisms. Darwinian assumptions about fitness are modeled using replicator dynamics to show that the organism evolving at a slower rate in a mutualistic relationship gains a disproportionately high share of the benefits or payoffs. Extending the model A mathematical model analyzing the behavior of a system needs initially to be as simple as possible to aid in developing a base understanding the fundamentals, or first-order effects, pertaining to what is being studied. With this understanding in place it is then appropriate to see if other, more subtle, parameters second-order effects further impact the primary behaviors or shape additional behaviors in the system. Following Maynard Smith's seminal work in EGT, the subject has had a number of very significant extensions which have shed more light on understanding evolutionary dynamics, particularly in the area of altruistic behaviors. Some of these key extensions to EGC are See also Adaptive dynamics Behavioral ecology Dynamical systems Evolutionary dynamics Gene-centered view of evolution Mimetics Notes <laughs>